guys, my Rose Steel here from Fashion Steel NYC, and welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you stopping by. So today is something a little different. I know I'm always doing fashion or vlogs, but today I'm talking all about blogging because that is one of the main questions I get asked. I have been full-time blogging since November 2018, so a good amount of time. Today is what, July 4th? Happy holiday if you celebrate that. Anywho, yeah, my blogging experience full time has been really great, but these are some of the tools that I've been using ever since I started blogging, but that I find make life super duper easy. So if you're interested in any of these products, I would appreciate if you would check out the links below. I'm gonna link everything that I can find. That way your girl will get a commission and that helps me as a full time blogger because I need to pay these bills. I need to buy some things. So let's just get right into it. What I am vlogging on right now is the Canon Mark II G7X PowerShot camera. I got this camera from Best Buy. I think it cost me plus tax like 800 bucks and it was the best 800 bucks I've ever spent. I love this camera. If you wanna try it out but are not ready to commit to buying it, I would check out borrowlenses.com you can borrow this camera for up to like two weeks for I think like 60 bucks. It's definitely worth it. That's the way I found out about this camera. I actually kept renting it. It's an online service. They deliver it within like a day or two with the return packaging and everything. So you keep it for as long as you rent it for and then you just return it super duper easy. I kept doing that for vacations. I think I took a trip to Paris, I took a trip to Morocco, and I was doing all these trips where I just kept renting this camera. And I rented it so much, I could've just bought it. <laughs> but if you just wanna experience the camera, see how it works, see if you like it, I believe that it's the best vlog camera on the market. I use this camera for almost all of my videos for YouTube. It's definitely worth it. Check it out. To stabilize my camera, I use the Targus TG42TT tripod. It's an amazing tripod. It's very compact. You can close it up, put it down. You can also elongate it. I've used this for about a year. I actually had to replace it after a year, but it is the best tripod. And I love it because I can use it with my vlogging camera, which I'm doing now. I can also use this little extension here that I got from Amazon. It's called Wiz Gear, but there's a ton of different kinds. I'll put a few links to them below, as well as the tripod. And this is just a phone adapter. So I could just screw this in to my tripod and then it holds my phone so that I could do hands-free video. And what I use my hands-free video for is for Instagram stories. You can get a whole sense of my body. It feels more like you're watching TV versus getting this aspect. And I found that that is a way to also increase the engagement of your Insta stories. So if you're looking for more tips about Instagram, and Insta stories and also tools that I use. Make sure to head over to my Etsy shop, check out my So You Wanna Be A Blogger ebook because that has all the tools in it that I use and all the sites that I've joined to make money blogging. And you can also check out my Insta Stories Pro ebook which has 10 apps that I use for Instagram and also my Insta Grow ebook that has 33 apps that I use for Instagram and Insta Stories. A little plug there. I mean, you gotta plug your businesses, people. Like, don't be ashamed to plug your work. How else are people supposed to know about it? If you keep it to yourself, don't be humble about your work. Anywho, so that's how I do my hands-free Instagram and Insta stories. It's also how I do my self-timer photos. I just set this up on my tripod, and then I hit my self-timer, and then I run and I jump and I get on my calendar and I take my little outfit of the day photos. I've also used this on vacation. On my recent trip to Tulum with my girls, I set this up to take almost all of our group photos. I think there's actually a little video clip of that, but it's hilarious. It's a great tool to get to make blogging and photography much easier. This little hands-free phone adapter and also the tripod. Ooh, I need to take a drink. like. I'm really not used to talking this much. Where is my coffee? 
Nespresso. I actually had to make an iced coffee today because it is hot as hell. Let me see. It is 9.45 in the morning on July 4th and it is already 83 degrees. And right now since I'm recording this video, I don't have my air conditioner on. I'm in here sweating. It's hot. I'm gonna try not to complain though because I love the warm weather. My next tip being that I'm talking about cameras, of course you need SD cards, memory cards for your camera. I usually order them in bulk from Amazon. My favorite brand is Sandisk and I always get the 128 gigabyte, which is I guess the highest gigabyte that you can get. I have so many of them. You guys, this whole box is full of my memory cards from like the last three years. And what I love about these memory cards is that you have these forever. So you have all of your photos forever. No matter if your blog crashes, if your Instagram is stolen and all your photos are gone, like I'm always gonna have all my photos because I keep every disc. Once that one's full, I buy new ones. That's a great backup system for your photos just in case your phone dies, you lose your phone or you have some kind of damage where all of the photos in your phone are gone. Of course you can upload them to the cloud if you have iPhone but I don't like doing that. So I back up all my photos on my disk and also on my um, external hard drive but I'll show that to you in a minute. I love these, love these, love these. They are the best. I get two of these from Amazon for like 42 bucks. I think that's uh, an excellent price because sometimes one, just one, it's 42 bucks. It's crazy. But I will put a link to my Amazon store which has all of this stuff there. I'll also just put an individual link so that you can get yours. 128 gig is the best. Now, going hand in hand with your SD cards, which if you are a blogger and you take a whole bunch of photos, you're going to need a whole bunch of these. So I would just stock up on them. My photographer and friend, Rose. Lazard. Check her out if you're in New York City and you're looking for a photographer. Her rates are amazing. She is wonderful. She takes about 90% of my photos. I'll take the other 10. But yeah, this little case sometimes is great too so that you don't lose your cards. Speaking of cards, what goes hand in hand with your memory cards is this little gadget that I absolutely love. Bam. Rose my photographer taught me about this gadget and this gadget has saved my entire life. So what this is, is a memory card reader. You see how I have the card in there? I could literally just take that out. This is the best 10 bucks I ever spent in my life. You have your shoot with your photographer, with your camera, get your phone, boop, plug that right in, put your card in, and then you can upload the pictures directly to your phone. You don't even gotta wait to get home and upload it to your computer. Most people use apps on their phone to edit their photos anyway and then airdrop them back to their computer if you have Apple, which is why you should have Apple. I mean, I know it's expensive, but it's good. So yeah, you could just upload those photos directly to your phone, edit them in your phone, airdrop them to your Mac if you have a Mac. If you don't have this, you're playing yourself. You're not a blogger, you're not. You're not a real blogger if you don't have this. You need it, especially if you shoot often and then you already have your cards. So I don't even know what this little thing is called. I guess it's an SD card reader. Another one of my favorite blogging tools. This one's really obvious, but your phone. So many people ask me, they're like, what kind of camera did you use to take this photo? Like on photos I post to Instagram. And I'm like, iPhone. <laughs> iPhones are amazing. Okay, if you have the eight and up, I mean, the camera's really, really good. I mean, you're gonna get a nice crisp photo, especially if you use that portrait mode. Portrait mode is life, okay? Portrait mode is amazing. My photographer Rose, we take photos with her DSLR camera. I don't know what kind of camera it is. Y'all can ask her, I'll put her information below. And her camera is expensive, her lenses are expensive, and the pictures come out making you look bomb. I know I don't look like that in real life, I know I don't. It's some magic in that camera. iPhone works just as well. Well, eh, it's a little less crisp, yes. But the thing that I found about iPhone photos, especially for Instagram, is that iPhone photos do better than DSLR camera photos. I don't know what kind of sorcery that Instagram has going on inside of it, but it's able to detect everything that's been done to that photo that you upload. So let's say you take the photo with a DSLR camera and then you take that photo and you take it over to, 
I don't know, Facetune and like do some stuff to it. And then you take it over to Snapseed and you know, you do some stuff to it. And then you take it to Lightroom and you do some edits and then you upload it. Instagram is gonna be like, okay, first of all, this is professional. They use all three of these apps to do all of this stuff. And so we know that this is not in the moment. We know that this is not, you know, just a regular person taking a photo with their phone, posting it to Instagram and they suppress it. Instagram wants regular people. They just want regular photos. They just want it to be fun. The more you get away from that, the more your photo is gonna be suppressed. For me, generally, I like to do a mixture of iPhone photos, videos, and professional photos, a mix. So that, you know, my photos aren't all professional type photos. And then I just wanna be real. Like sometimes Rose is not with me. <laughs> sometimes I take the photos myself with a self timer and my iPhone. It's all about the editing, guys. Like literally you can make any photo, any photo that you take with the iPhone look like it's a million bucks with your editing tools. And I use a lot of different tools to edit. I already said I use Snapseed. I don't really use Facetune or Visco. Is that how you say it, Visco? I do use Lightroom. I do have some presets that I use. If you're interested in those, make sure to check out my So You Wanna Be A Blogger ebook. I think it has a whole section on presets. Also, the Instagram ebook also has a section on presets and the apps that I use to edit my photos for Instagram. My voice is starting to crack. Clearly y'all, I just be in the house all day by myself watching YouTube videos and Netflixing and chilling by myself and Huluing and chilling by myself. And so I'm not used to talking this much. I'm gonna get right back to y'all, just give me a second. And just like that, I'm back. Another tool that I use for blogging that has made my life extremely easier is this. This is an external hard drive. It's the Easy Store WD hard drive i got this from best buy actually at the same time i bought this camera comes with this little adapter cord that you plug into your computer and i actually had my photographer rose jailbreak this for me because i'm not really technical i don't know how to do that but of course there's a youtube video for it i think this is one terabyte is that is that what it's called a terabyte a terabyte tb something like that i broke it up into two files half for photos and half for videos every photo that i've ever taken since i've had this is here so i'll use the memory card to upload it directly to my laptop then i will drag and drop from my laptop into the folders file on here save it and then delete it from my actual computer and keep it here that way the space on my computer is free everything i ever need in case my computer ever dies is here including all of my blog posts and also when i was editing my own videos i don't know if you guys have noticed but i don't edit my videos anymore i noticed a lot of people are like oh your videos have gotten so much better y'all i haven't edited a video since the tulum vlog starting at the tulum vlog i have a video editor now and she is amazing Thank you, Dominique, you're the best. It's made my life so much easier. I actually hate editing videos. I love making and taking the videos. I have a very creative mind. I know what I need to record. I know how it's gonna come out. But putting it together is just so time consuming and I don't know how to do stuff. I don't know how to make the little things pop up. I don't know how to make sounds come. I don't know how to like do the transitions. I'm just a writer. So another good thing I've learned about being a full-time blogger is that you gotta delegate. Get in where you fit in. Where I fit in is that I'm very good at writing. <laughs> I'm very good at like trend spotting and style and fashion. I'm not a video editor, so I outsource that. And it's been the best thing I've ever done. But when I was doing my own editing, I actually downloaded Final Cut Pro in to my external hard drive and then I would just edit everything in my external hard drive, save it to my computer, and then upload it to YouTube. And then once it was uploaded to YouTube, I would delete the video off my computer. And that's because I hardly have any space left on my Mac after having it for, I don't know, eight years, seven years? I think about seven years I've had this Mac. It's been through some things, guys. I don't want it to hear me, okay? probably on its last leg. I'm probably gonna have to buy a new one soon. 
but then I could write that off of my taxes and that's great but I'm always gonna keep this one my whole life is in here well actually it's here I consider myself a carry but I actually back that ass up and I know somebody's gonna ask about this case it's so cute right I got it from chic geeks and they have all different kinds this is the marble one it's super super cute I think I have a coupon code for it so I'll put it below in the description also with a link I think they only come for a different kind of max with different sizes so you can check them out and make sure to check out that coupon code too but yeah that's a great way to save space on your computer the external hard drive lifesaver lifesaver even though I have a video editor now I still use this because I can't have all those videos on my laptop. So I upload them to my laptop, save them into my external hard drive, delete them off my laptop, and then I actually have like a special folder that I share with my video editor. I drag and drop all the videos into the folder and she does the rest. She sends me the video back when it's done. Oh, so much more free time to actually do the things that I'm good at. A few more things, I also have a printer and a copy machine. I think it's great to have. I can print out my contracts, scan my W-9 forms. Is it W-9? Yeah, the W-9 forms. When you get a contract from someone, they always want that so that they're able to pay you. I have a really old one, let me show you guys. And I keep it here in my window seal. It is the HP DeskJet print, scan, and copy machine. I've had it so long and it's probably time for a new one, but it works great. I can hook it right up to my laptop if I need to print something, if I need to scan something. It's a good thing to have if you are a business owner. Last but not least, because I'm very type A and I have all of these campaigns and due dates and events, I need a calendar. And not that little Google calendar in my phone. I mean, I know that's good, but I just don't use it. I don't know why. But what I love is a good desk top huge calendar like this one that I got from Amazon and what I love about it is that it's big I can highlight when all of my campaigns are due I can make little notes to myself and I just love it because I look at it every single day it's literally right next to my computer on my desk I cannot miss it and because I don't have an assistant yet or an intern yet although I think I'm gonna get one soon it's good for me to have everything that I could see for the month out. I also keep a journal. I actually have three on my desk, but I keep a little journal to remind myself of like outfits I wanna put together, things I need to do for the day, things I need to mention during my Insta stories. I'm very just kind of type A. And I mean, it helps me to stay on top of all of my obligations as well as my money. I actually have a calendar over here. I don't know if you could see it right here. This has all of the campaigns, when they're due, and how much money I'm owed. I'm actually waiting on three whole checks right now that are late. I had to you know, send out some invoices a few times. Hello, where's my money? <laughs> You're late. That's a thing about blogging. I think you guys, in the video I did with my three blogger booze, where we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of blogging, hunting down people for your money. I would say, Four out of five times, my payments are late. It's a holiday today, so I know I'm not gonna get that money today. So I'm just making sure I'm sending up follow-up emails. And I wouldn't know that unless I had written down when my payments are due. So I'll put that on my calendar too. Payment due today. Have I received that payment? No. Let me send a follow-up email. It's how you gotta be sometimes. Speaking of blogging and full-time blogging, I just wanna do a little update. It's going really well. I feel like in the beginning I was super duper stressed about money I'm not as stressed anymore like we're in second quarter right now second quarter has been good to me first quarter was actually pretty good but I had a lull at about mm, February March really kind of slow so I'm just kind of figuring out the market and like how brands are working and usually around major holidays is huge so far the summer has been so good to me. I already know that I'm gonna have a really big uptick of work come November to the ho till the end of December. Holiday time is huge. Like I made a huge bulk of money last year at this time, like right when I quit my job. I know that that's gonna be a good time, but yeah, like I don't really have to worry about money. 
it just comes and a lot of people think that you have to do a lot of pitching and like how are the brands finding you honestly i have no idea how the, how the brands are finding me i think it's just that i'm very consistent with my work especially my blog that i have an index of work online so when people google fashion blogger or new york city blogger i am showing up because of my seo and that's how they're finding me i'm also guessing that they're looking at hashtags and literally every day that i open my email there's a few pitches from brands not all of them are paid i do turn a lot of things down i think sometimes as a full-time blogger you feel like you have to take everything because you don't know if you're gonna get something else and i would say for the first six months of full-time blogging that's kind of how i was i felt the need to kind of just like take everything because you just have no idea if you know the money's gonna come i would say I, over the last two months i've been consistently getting my rate when i ask so i can be a little more strategic about what i say yes and no to sometimes i will still take things that are less than my rate and that's because i want to build a relationship with that brand well i just think it's cool i've actually been asking over my rate just to see and what i've found is that you just have to start high because you're never just gonna get exactly what you asked for unless you didn't ask for enough a brand is super fast to be like oh okay we can we can do that you're like damn i should ask for more just expect that any brand is going to try to negotiate with your rate start with about double of what you think you can get so that you can like negotiate to some place that's above your rate but you know the brand still feels like they're getting a deal it's only the fourth like i track my campaigns by month so july 1st started a new month for me by the third i had already made about four thousand dollars worth of campaigns so my goal for every month is five thousand dollars i've exceeded that goal every single time i probably need to raise it i'm gonna raise my goal to eight and i'm telling you guys i, I hold myself accountable but yeah so i've already made about half of what i expect to make for the month which is pretty good and the second quarter already i've made close to twenty thousand dollars and so i'm pretty happy again it's just consistency i treat this like I know I'm gonna make money from it, even from the things that make me absolutely no money, like making sure I'm posting to my blog twice a week. I don't have to do that. I wanna do it. I love doing it, so I do it. But just because I do that, I'm still showing up in SEO and brands are able to find me. I'm not getting paid for doing that. It's just what I wanna do. It's just what I love to do. Same thing with making sure I'm posting regularly to Instagram. I mean, I do get paid for those, but like there's lots of stuff I put on Instagram that I put on there because I'm passionate about it because I want to inform my readers and those are the things that like brands love to see. I mean I know it's super duper cliche and everybody says it but consistency and fucking hard work like I work very hard for all of this and I feel like you get out of it what you put into it so that is my update on blogging and those are the tools that help me to blog better. If you have any questions, drop them below. I'll answer them. If you're interested in checking out my Etsy shop, I'll do a little 40% hmm, off sale for those watching this video. Let me think of a coupon code. The coupon code will be coupon code, <laughs> all capital letters. If you watch this video, you wanna buy anything from my Etsy shop, use code, coupon code. And I actually have to write that down on my calendar. See how that calendar comes in handy? So my Etsy shop is full of pitch templates, how I pitch to brands, how I pitch to hotels, how I pitch for Fashion Week. If you're into Fashion Week and you're a blogger and you wanna go to Fashion Week, definitely check out that whole template because you should probably start pitching mid-August, which is next month. It'll be September before you know it. The pitch template for Fashion Week works for all Fashion Weeks. I've been to all of them, so I know exactly what you have to do. It's a little bit different for every city, but check it out. I also have a sponsorship template if you're looking to get brands to sponsor your event, either with gifts for a gift bag, with product, or with money. You can check out that template, my So You Want to Be a Blogger ebook, and my two Instagram ebooks. Gotta give back. 
you know, trying to help y'all out too. All the things that took me like years to learn, you can know by reading a book in five minutes. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Do not forget to like if you learned something and subscribe so you never miss a video. We'll get back to the fashions, guys. Don't worry. It's happening. All right, I gotta go record some Insta stories. It's the things you do for free that make you the money. Don't forget. Good morning, Insta stories, and happy Monday. If you have not yet checked out my most recent post, swipe up here to check it out. It's a really good post, you're gonna love it.